Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today we're learning Echo Shell in our pinwheel block. It's basically starting with a quarter circle shape, travel stitching, and echoing that repeatedly until it fills up the space completely. We're going to work this into two different areas, coming from the really sharp point and coming from the wider 90 degree uh, corner in our pinwheel block. Both ways, it's going to be the same basic steps. I'm going to flow through it, stitching on a marked line, and then show you how to freehand quilt it as well. So let's get started. So here we go on our block, and this is the echo shell filling up the 90 degree corner. And I'm basically going to stitch down to that stitch in the ditch section, flow up and around, travel stitch over and down. And these are spaced about a half of an inch apart. And that's going to be important for later whenever we try and freehand quilt this with no lines marked. We'll have to kind of estimate the space visually, kind of make it up as we go, more or less. We've stitched this design before in block number five, and this is just yet another place that you can put it. I love how these soft curves uh, really kind of soften up all those sharp angles that we created with the pinwheel. Okay, so now I've got these two short little lines, so I'm going to stitch right over and just knock these out, carefully stitching on the line, then travel stitching back. If you can't see what you're doing, of course, rotate it. That's why we're working on little blocks, so that way we can rotate a lot and see what we're doing. There we go, knock that out. Now I'm going to travel stitch down that line and get to those lines that I've missed, kind of inside the block. I will admit, you know, this is very careful travel stitching uh, and ditching at the same time. Bringing your hands just a little closer and using that edge of your foot, rubbing that up against the index finger can really help. Just kind of keep everything in line. Okay, so that's the last line stitched, and I'm going to travel stitch down. I've got, um, basically it's almost a teardrop shape. This is the echo shell that we're working into more the more narrow corner. It's just a little teardrop and these I spaced a little closer together. They're around a quarter of an inch apart. So I'm careful to travel stitching up and swinging around. It's the same basic movement. Travel stitch up and swing. So now I'm going to work my way over here and finish up this last little line right there and that's actually going to put me in the perfect location to knock out my next 90 degree uh, set of echoes like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch down to what I think is about a, ha a half of an inch and swing out and around with my echo. And I'm going for, it's not an echo, sorry, it's a quarter, quarter circle shape. I'm aiming for a quarter circle shape. If you don't start perfectly, it's not the end of the world, but whatever you stitch, that's what you're going to be echoing. Now I'm going to stitch out to what I think is about a half of an inch away, and I'm echoing. My eyes are kind of looking at the space between the needle and that first line of stitching, that first quarter circle. That's what my eyes are looking at as I stitch that design. Again, I'm going to stitch down a half an inch. I'm not taking a ruler to it, so I'm just eyeballing it. And now I'm swinging over again. It's kind of like your eyes are, are both judging that distance and also uh, kind of past the needle a little bit. It's, it's hard to describe. The best thing to do is try focusing and looking at a couple different places on your quilt and see what worked best for placing your lines most accurately. I do know that staring at the needle usually doesn't help. <laughs> so uh, definitely keep that in mind. So I'm just swinging back and forth and you notice that this this echoing is a lot more shallow than this over here. That's okay. Uh, just like I said, you know, half of this I'm freehand quilting, so it's not going to be as perfect and identical as uh, the areas that are running on marked lines. Uh, but that's all right. The, the nice thing about the pinwheel block is because it is symmetrical, uh, I would encourage you to mark um, half of it. So you have uh, two, pin, two uh, of your half square triangles up here. 
uh, marked and two down here, two of the triangles marked down here, and then leave the other two spaces open so you can get some experience freehand quilting as well. It's not going to be perfect. The lines are not going to be spaced identically. You're not going to have probably the identical curve that you have in these areas that are marked. It's not the end of the world. Um, perfection isn't the point of quilting. Uh, I, I see it as almost putting your signature on a quilt. Could anyone else stitch it this way exactly today the way I am stitching it? And the answer is no. So that makes it something that's made by me and very unique. And that's a good thing. Um, I have quilts from my grandmothers that are very imperfect. Uh, the piecing was imperfect, the stitching was imperfect, the hand quilting was imperfect, but I love them because they are a piece of those women. They are an honest uh, reflection of their ability and their skill and what they could do. Uh, perfection was not the point of that, and I love the imperfection that I see in their quilts. So understand that I'm not stitching all that perfectly today, but I don't mind showing it to you because I want you to see that skill changes. Some days you're going to sit down and you're going to be able to travel stitch like a pro. You're going to be able to stitch in the ditch for miles and not stitch out once. And then some days you're going to sit down and you're going to be all over the place. Maybe I should have warmed up a little bit more today. Maybe I should have pulled out a practice sandwich and done some stitching before I got on the machine to stitch this block. It's one of those things that can make a very big difference. So I encourage you to do it if you have time. Have fun with this block though. Don't get too obsessive or nitpicky about perfection. Remember that you are creating something warm and comforting that might be passed down for years in your family. And those people down the road, they're going to love seeing that unique um, signature that you have put on your quilt just for them. So I hope you'll keep that in mind. My name is Leah Day, and this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern at leahday.com and learn how to piece and free motion quilt with us together through all 42 blocks. Find your pattern at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.